Welcome to dealing with materials data. In this course, we are looking at the collection analysis and interpretation of data from material science and engineering. And we are in the module on data processing. And uh, in this uh, session, we want to look at the distribution function of a data series. So, you have a set of uh, numbers, you have some data that is available to you and you want to say something about the distribution function of the data that you have got. So, there are two things that we are going to do. One is the UTP copper, we will take the conductivity data. And uh, the first thing when you take uh, data like that is to plot the histogram. A histogram gives you an idea about uh, the uh, approximately what the probability distribution function uh, that is sampled by the data. Of course, in the case of uh, copper conductivity, we know that it looks like normal. Uh, it is not surprising because it is the same material and we have made more than one measurement and so the noise is random and uh, if that is so, if you have random errors or noise, then you do get normal distribution. Um, but if you have very small number of observations, a histogram can be noisy and it might be difficult to judge the probability distribution. Uh, in those cases, it is better to display the cumulative distribution function. So, we are going to do this exercise for the ETP copper, uh, we will do all this. But there are sometimes complications. Uh, it is not uncommon to not have access to raw data. So, in this case for example, I have data for all the 20 measurements, but typically that is not what is uh, published. It is very rare for people to list out all the measurements that they make. And what is worse, sometimes you might have access only to bin the data. That is data has already been analyzed and the values which lie within a range, they are all just counted without really telling what exactly the values were. And uh, they are just uh, given in, in the form of a histogram plot. And so, even the bin the data is not available to you in uh, raw form is what I am assuming. You might have access only to the bin data and only in the form of a plot. Now, can we do any analysis on that data uh, is the question. The answer is yes, uh, but to do that first you have to generate the data. So, you have to go from the plot to the data. And then from the data, we can go back and do the analysis and how do we do it? So, um, at this point, a disclaimer is necessary. There are too many different ways of doing or achieving this and different people have different preferences. But based on my preference, choice and experience, so I am going to give you uh, an introduction to a couple of tools, um, introduction in the sense that I will just show how it is done. Um, one is called engage digitizer, uh, this is used to read data from image. The other one is called jimp, this is to pull out the data from a PDF file into a JPEG file uh, in the form in which you can then feed it to the digitizer. Of course, uh, you can use uh, LibreOffice uh, um, to get this data from engage digitizers uh, um, um, after reading the data. Uh, into LibreOffice uh, directly or you can do it by hand. And uh, in the following exercise that I am going to show you, the data was entered by me by hand. Uh, but of course, I will show that a digitizer also can do it uh, automatically, uh, which we are not going to use uh, so much. So, so, in this session, we are also going to look at how to use these uh, two tools um, to generate data uh, from a PDF file. Uh, of the type uh, which is bin the data, that is what we are going to look at, but you can use this uh, for everything. And uh, specifically, what we are going to do is to consider the supplementary material to the paper, surface diffusion driven nanoshell formation by control sintering of mesoporous nanoparticle aggregates by Anumol et al. It is published in Nanoscale and there is uh, figure 14a which gives the data on cluster size distribution of synthesized uh, titania. And it gives it in the form of a histogram and that is what the data that we are going to read out. And uh, we will use, uh, we have used the digitizer and the gym to do this. Uh, so, I will show you the data and we will do the analysis on the data. But I will also show you how to use gym and engage uh, by taking figure 14b as an example. So, that uh, will be part of this session. And uh, 
And when you have bin the statistical data like that, there is data with different statistical weights. Why is that so? In the case of ETP copper conductivity data, each point had equal weight 1 by 1 n where n was the number of measurements because all data points were just measurements. But when you have bin the data, the statistical weights of different bins are different. Uh, for example, in the case where we are looking at this uh, titania size, uh, the cluster size data was given in bins of size 20 nanometers. So, we do not have access to the original data. And if you look at something like 200 nanometer cluster size, it means all clusters of sizes 190 to 210 were put in this uh, bin. right? So, we need to give a statistical weight Wi to each of the bins. And the WI is nothing but the frequency in that bin divided by the total number of observations. So, WI is the number of observations uh, in the ith bin to the total number of observations. So, so, this is the way to give different statistical weights and it becomes important in such bin data. Like I said, it is not very uncommon to see such bin data being published. So, sometimes if you want to do analysis with the existing data that is there in the literature, this kind of exercise becomes essential. And so then we uh, plot cumulative distribution. In the case of uh, uh, conductivity data, for example, it is rather straightforward to plot the cumulative distribution function. ECDF function will do and we have already done it uh, once, uh, but we will just repeat for the sake of completion. Uh, in the case of bin the data, of course, you have to um, get the cumulative distribution by considering the uh, weighting factors. right? So, i is an indicator function, it takes either unity when the condition is true or 0 when the condition is false. So, what is within i, the, the argument is a condition and if the condition is satisfied it will take unity and it is not satisfied it will take 0. So, we will consider the cluster size data and we will calculate the cumulative distribution function using this because cumulative distribution function x means uh, the probability that it is uh, less than or equal to x itself. So, and then we will plot it on the normal probability scale uh, and the pl plot will be a straight line if the data is normally distributed. So, that is how we know what is the underlying distribution. So, you can look at the cumulative distribu uh, distribution function and make out easily what the uh, what type of data you have. Of course, you can also get it from histogram data. If the data is good, you can make out fairly easily, uh, but otherwise it is uh, it's an approximation because noise can uh, throw you off. And there are places where it is very difficult uh, from histogram to actually understand. For example, log normal or Weibull might be very difficult to distinguish. Uh, so, the cumulative distribution function is a slightly better way of uh, understanding the distribution from which the data comes. So, let us go do this exercise. So, first we want to take the copper conductivity data, do the analysis. Then we want to understand how to take a PDF file specific figure you want to cut out and then generate uh, a JPEG out of it in such a way that it can be fed to digitizer. And in digitizer then we need to know how to read the values which can then be entered into LibreOffice and, and you can have a CSV file which can be used for further analysis. So, I am going to do that as the second exercise to show you how to uh, do this um, digitization and followed by uh, the reading of numbers from such uh, figures. And uh, finally, we will take such uh, one such bin data and uh, do the analysis on that data in this session. So, as usual, the first exercise to do is to uh, start with the uh, R. Okay, so, it is a good idea to know what is the working directory. So, we are in the right directory and R version is 3.6.1. So, the first exercise is to read data and plot the histogram. So, let us do that. So, we want to de read the ETP conductivity data and uh, then we want to plot the histogram. So, of course, you can look at the histogram, this is the frequency versus uh, data plot and it does look like uh, a normal distribution, maybe slight skewing. Um, so, this gives you an idea that this might be normal distribution. So, that is the first exercise. 
and the second exercise of course is to um, plot the cumulative distribution function. So, this is the cumulative distribution function and uh, this also indicates uh, uh, that uh, this could be um, ok. So, this also indicates that this could be a, a problem with the uh, this could be a normal distribution uh, and of course, it is uh, difficult to make out. So, we would like to make the uh, y axis uh, to be scaled um, as a probability distribution and uh, then you will find that it is normal and this exercise we have done in the past ones. Now, let us go to the second exercise, let us consider this supplementary data. So, this is the supplementary data on surface driven diffusion of nano shell formation by control sintering of mesoporous nanoparticle aggregates uh, by Anumol et al and it is published in nanoscale. So, this is the supplementary information to the paper and the paper has lots of data and one of the data that uh, we are interested is here. So, it is a cluster size in nanometer versus frequency. Uh, so, the figure caption says, uh, says that it is a histogram showing the cluster size distribution of as synthesized titania aggregates and uh, this is a cluster size distribution for uh, titania annealed at 600 degree Celsius. So, this is the data that I have uh, taken and uh, generated the raw data for our further analysis. Uh, but I want to show how I did that uh, using this as an example. So, first thing we need to do is to take this figure and generate a JPEG file out of it so that this can then be fed into the digitizer. To do that, uh, I am going to open this file uh, using the application GIMP. GIMP is a GNU image manipulation program and it tells me which page I should open. Of course, I want only this page. So, I say this page. Once I have this page, uh, GIMP has lots of tools. The tool that is of relevance to us is a selection tool. So, I am going to say rectangle select. What is it that I am going to select? So, you can uh, mouse click and get this and then you can say copy or cut that portion and you can make a new file. And so, you need to give the size of the file. So, the size you can read off from here for example, right. So, this is 250, this is 500, this is 750. So, we have about uh, uh, probably 300 or 350 in width. So, I am going to say 350 in width and you can see in the height also. So, this is 250 and this is 500. So, we again probably have another uh, 300, um, 350 in height. So, I am going to say 350 by 350. Then I am going to say paste. So, you can see that the figure that is here, I cut and I pasted it here and then I am going to do some analysis here. I am going to transform, uh, uh, no I do not need rotations. So, I, I just want to uh, make the image a little bit uh, bigger, um, so it will be easier. So, let us say that I want to um, zoom it to some 400, ok. So, here is uh, the figure. Now, I am going to save this figure as, uh, yeah, so let us go here, let us go to data and uh, this is, let me save it as uh, test.cf uh, so that you can later do further analysis, but we actually want the data of the figure to be in uh, JPEG format, right. You can um, export the image as JPEG and as uh, good quality as possible. So, we are going to export. So, the figure has been exported and if you go here you can see that there is this text.jpg. 
Now we are going to say, now we are going to use this uh, Yeah, so engage digitizer is this and I am going to say file import. Uh, the file that I need to import is the uh, file that I recently generated uh, that is in the data file here, the test.jpg. So, I am going to open and ok. So, the data has been imported uh, here. Uh, the first thing that we need to do is to identify the uh, x, y axis so that the program can read the data. So, that is the first step. So, you need to identify 3 points on the axis. The origin, uh, some distance along x and you have to tell what that point is, some distance along y and you have to tell what that y point is. So, that uh, the uh, sort of distances on this uh, plot is uh, mapped for uh, the program. So, it knows uh, if you go some distance how much uh, does it correspond to in the x units or y units. So, let us do that. So, first we want to do that and um, it is um, going to use some zoom, uh, it is easier for me to deal with if I have this. Um, so, so let us say that this is the first point we want to mark and that this is nothing but 100 in x and 0 in y. Okay. So, we know that this is the point and this point is 350 and 0. So, let us mark this. So, it is 350 and y is 0. Okay. And then we want to mark this one. So, we know that this is um, 0 in x axis and 17 y axis. Okay? Very good. So, now uh, the engaged digitizer knows that this is for example, 350. So, if I go here it will know that it is 250. So, as you can see here, if I hover the mouse over these values, um, then it gives those numbers, right? So, for example, if I want to know what this point is, so it tells me that it is about 205, right? And what this point is, so it is about 175, okay? So, so once we have defined the three points is all sufficient. Now, the curve point tool is the one which actually can identify the curve points, right? So, for example, let me just start uh, putting points. So, let us say that I have uh, this point, I have this point, I have this point. I have this point. Point, this point, this point, and I have this point, right? So, so the the program can actually get the the points, um, and you can then uh, import the points. Uh, so, so if you just say uh, export. Um, and so test.csv then it will save the data and you can open the test.csv um, okay so it gives you the xy points but this is not very useful for me uh, because I mean of course it puts the curve crazily, the curve should actually go like this. Uh, so, what I did instead is to actually hover and read the data like this is 175 and for 175 as cluster size 
the frequency is about 5 right and for uh, this is 115 and the frequency turned out to be like 2 and this is 45 and that corresponds to uh, uh, 205 and so on. So, so in a similar fashion so and, and, and so this you can use for reading any digital data and it comes very handy. So, sometimes if you see data in literature and it is not in a form in which you can analyze it, um, uh, you can use this uh, uh, these programs, uh, but these are not the only ones. So, there are other uh, programs that are available. So, what I have read, I have made such a data set and let me copy that uh, data set. So, this is the CSV file I need cluster size frequency, uh, let me put it here. Okay. So, this is the data that I uh, got 160 to 320 in 20s and 112, 20 to 34 etcetera which you can see from this figure. So, it is 1, 12, 22, etc. Uh, so, it is like uh, 160, 180, 200, 220, 240, 260, etc. up to 320. So, this is the data that I have digitized um, using a GIMP and Engage and that is the data that is shown here, x versus frequency. Uh, this is in nanometer the size and uh, the cluster size and the frequency of such clusters. So, that is what is the data that is given here. This is the data that we are going to uh, use now and do our further analysis, right. So, let us see what is the analysis that we are trying to do. Okay. So, first thing you have to read the cluster size frequency data and uh, sum of frequency is uh, just a sum of uh, that column and the weight is nothing but the particular number of observations in that bin divided by the total number of observations. So, that is the weight and uh, the number of bins that we have is uh, given by the length of uh, x because remember it just had x and f as the two columns. And then we are going to make a vector uh, called z and it has uh, n rows and uh, we are also going to make another sequence which goes from 2 to uh, n, 2 to n because z1 I am going to take as w1 uh, times the x and then for other z it is the previous z plus wi times that uh, x. So, this is for the, the cumulative uh, distribution and, um, and you can normalize by the total so that it goes to 1 that is why the last value is taken as Zn and everything is uh, divided by that. And when we are plotting uh, we should remember that the x value uh, is actually um, red. Uh, it has a spread of uh, 20. So, when we have uh, uh, these values, we want to plot uh, the, the cumulative distribution function in such a way that it has a step of uh, um, that size. Uh, so, you, you do not want the value to jump at that uh, value itself, but you want it to um, uh, jump 10 after that. So, this uh, shifting is done to make sure that uh, the, um, the step is of the right size 
and I am also adding a point exactly at the center of that step to indicate that that is where we have read the value. The step actually indicates the uh, uncertainty in that value. Anything that lies within that range will actually be binned to that point. So that is what this indicates. So let us plot this and see. So you this is what I said. So 160 is where we have taken a data point, but we know that 160 actually means 150 to 170. So we want a step and that is the reason why this uh, minus 10 is there. So it will draw this line and it will show a, a step then. And wherever the actual values that we have read from the uh, histogram because the histogram is giving these bins 160, 180, 200, etc. So I have put a red point to indicate that that is where we have read the value, but this is the uncertainty or, or the bin size, uh, all values that lie within this range are actually clubbed and put it at this value. So this is the uh, plot. So obviously uh, it will be more helpful. Um, if you can, of course, you we have seen the um, seen the data in histogram form, and you can also plot the um, this one to to actually see the histogram. And in fact, if you want to get the histogram feel, you can also make it uh, uh, type. Yeah, so, so you can see that the heights of these uh, lines are equal to the frequency. So it, it does show you this nice histogram uh, which was what was there in the data itself, right. Uh, so we have seen uh, this data and so this is basically the same thing. So we have read this values and we have plotted it here, okay. So, um, we can do that. The more useful thing is to of course uh, do the y axis to be a um, probability scale. So we are going to do that. Okay, so let us take a look at uh, the command that we have. So, um, so let us uh, go back here. So it is the same, uh, sum the frequencies, uh, make the weights, find out the uh, number of data points and uh, generate the cumulative and then normalize it and then plot it. So that we have done already, but the only extra thing is to use ggplot now and use that to scale the y axis. So that is the command that we have done here. So we have made this new data called y and what is y? y is just a data frame, it takes uh, x as x and uh, xx as x minus 10 because we remember we wanted to make these steps y as z by z norm so that the values will go to 1. So this uh, data frame now we take and plot and uh, while plotting we have the uh, ggplot so it is xx versus y so the geometry uh, is of step so it will do this step plot and then we scale the y axis to be normal uh, probability scale. Then we just add the points at these centers like we did in the previous case. So you can see that this is more or less uh, sort of straight line um, indicating that this data might also be normal. So to summarize, uh, we can have data and if it is raw data, we can deal with it directly. If the data is only in uh, published papers, uh, if you have access to the PDF files, it is possible to generate the uh, some form of data from those plots yourself. There are lots of tools that are available online um, to, for you to do that and both the GIMP and the Engage Digitizer that I showed you are uh, freeware. So you can freely download them and use them um, on, on your computers. 
uh, to get the data from the paper into a digital format. So, you can then use LibreOffice which is another freeware to have the data entered in CSV format. Once you have uh, of course the data in CSV format you can use R to do all the analysis and we have shown one example of how to plot the uh, histograms and cumulative distribution functions um, using R from a data that is given only in the form of a histogram plot. And the histogram plot also tells us how to deal with data which has a different statistical weights. So all the points in that data do not have the same weight. Uh, some values for example have frequency 1 or 2, uh, at some values there are about 50 or 60. And we know that when we have one bin, all values which lie in the range of that bin are actually binned into that uh, single bin. So, there is an uncertainty in the numbers. When we say 200 nanometers, it is 190 to 210 nanometers, any aggregate in that size will actually be counted in that bin. So, we need to give different weights and we have to understand that each bin has an uncertainty in terms of the actual value itself, but this is very common. I mean, we have hardly ever you will get raw data of all the cluster sizes for example. And so, once you have this kind of data, using this it is possible to proceed with the analysis and that is an example that we have shown. And you will have more exercises this week to do similar analysis from data of a similar type that we will give. Thank you.